guys, today I'm going to be doing a very interesting video. As the title of this video said, today I'm going to be going over my very first, I mean my very first ever survival kit that I made. And not only is this my first ever, it is also 10 years old or around there. I'm not exactly sure. I know it's around 10 years old. Maybe not exactly to the date, but it's somewhere around 10 years old. So it is very old and I've never broken into this to use it and it's been years since since I've actually gone into this thing. Now, before I get started, and before we go into the contents of this, I do want to let you guys know, uh, or just kind of ask you guys really to please help me out in sharing this video and all my videos in the future, because some weird stuff with Facebook is going on, and what, like whenever I try and post, like today as an example, I posted in 10 different groups, and now I'm banned for three days in posting for groups. So especially you guys on Facebook, if you are on Facebook or have a Facebook account, please help me share my videos it really does help me you know what you don't have to comment you don't have to like the video uh, at least I mean, like the video personally but you don't have to hit the like button you don't have to comment but please share the video it really helps me so with that thing out of, or with that little uh, asking out of the way let's get into this so like I said I haven't been into this kit in years and to kind of set the time frame this is once again around 2007 aged material in here so quite old material but what's most important than that aged material is the fact that most of the material this kit, not only was i not really a survivalist i was actually more of a video gamer uh but with the youtube especially youtube there was really not much publication of things like the five or ten c's of survivability dave canterbury wasn't really known in 2007 as well some of the gear like the a lot of what we know, like the through night, which is kind of like a very high value, you know, more uh, uh, more inexpensive, but still very high quality brands. Those things weren't around in 2007. And so with this kit, keep it that, all of that in mind, because when you see things like mag lights, or when you see things like glow sticks, you, know, you might be like, what? You know, you still carry one of those? But this was back before things like through night even existed. So keep that in mind for sure. So anyways, guys, with that all out of the way, let's get into this. And to judge this kit, everyone, of course, is going to judge this individually. But I'm going to be basing this off the 5 slash 10 C's of survivability because that's now what I swear by. And honestly, I think what the best thing is. So to start it, start off with the 5 C's or the 10 C's of survivability. Immediately, the one thing I like about this kit uh, is that there's this container. And so immediately, we do have container checked off the list but I have a strong feeling that we're gonna have more containers in here. So the first thing we have in here, I've actually never used this, but this is just straight, it, I've, like I said, I've never used this. I don't fully know how to use this, but this looks to be just like a bottle of DEET. I don't really know, but uh, this just looks like a bottle of 30% DEET. I have no idea how that is or how that even works but i would say a yes on that because if nothing else that deep formula is likely pretty flammable so you could probably at least start it on fire so i think that was uh, one of the first and one of the few just free floating items in here as you can see and i have to give myself very large props not to try and talk myself up here but i have to give myself pretty large props that everything in here is bagged so you have each individual bag so you have fire here you have have, I think this this just looks like random stuff like I yeah that's what it is so this is like medical stuff and then you have you know a whole bunch of just different uh, things and food here so they're all bags and I like that for two reasons one it keeps everything very individualistic so I know this kit has fire I know this kit has medical so everything's very well organized in that fact but in a second edition every bag that's in here that's extra is just more containers for me to put stuff into uh, so just digging into this one here uh, this has some kind of compass to it so that looks pretty awesome then this actually looks like a really neat uh, ferro rod and striker I believe this is yeah so this is a ferro rod with magnesium 
and as is the time this was very popular back in 2007 i no longer personally really agree with it but in 2007 it was very very popular to have magnesium running with your ferro rod i mean nowadays we make such large ferro rods that it's really both of them and then of course a very classic styled striker this is like a, a saw blade uh, like those like chopped up uh, hacksaw blades so very classic and of the time once again you can see how much we've kind of changed from that uh, the next thing in here is waterproof matches once again another very common thing I don't know if I'd really carry waterproof matches anymore myself I've never really loved matches except for kind of back in this time but keep in mind guys I was like a rookie to survival stuff so yeah didn't really know a whole lot and then this this is actually pretty awesome this is just an assortment of um, just lint and other things like that and then I believe you guys can see some tin foil here I believe what is in here is your regular uh, Vaseline uh, cotton balls I believe that's what's in there I don't actually know and I'm not really gonna dig in because I don't want to get that Vaseline over my or on my hand for this video but that's what's in there and then I think this was an extra fire starting thing and this is an Air Force type uh, signaling mirror and so definitely could start fires as well as signal uh, and that's really nice just in this little pouch and then lastly as you guys can probably already tell I believe this is a mylar blanket it should be I don't know why it wouldn't be uh, but I'm pretty sure it's a mylar blanket so that's really not too bad uh, going over combustion you know we have cover once again or we have cover here we have container once again with this uh, and then we have things like signaling, which is not a C. We have compass off the bat of 10 Cs. And then we have a couple different types of combustion with uh, waterproof matches and the ferro rod magnesium mix. And then to enhance the fire starting, we have accelerants such as the lint and maybe even this uh, deep here. So I would say that that's not a half bad kit in all honesty. And that's just where we, this is just beginning. Now just Jumping in to the medical part. So immediately I can see once again, you know, another plastic bag here. And so that adds to container once again on um, the five C's. Now in the five C's, and I know because I've watched Dave Canterbury a lot, he's not really a big fan of carrying medical stuff. So none of the not I don't think actually any of the stuff in here is actually going to apply for us personally in the five seeds of survivability. But once again, another, I think this is actually a few trash bags right here. So once again, strict containers. So even if you wanted to make the argument that, you know, these containers are already in use, you know, uh, there are some containers here. Now you guys can see there's lots of different types and sizes of bandages. I'm trying to get to what this is. Okay, I'm, not, I'm still not sure what this is. One moment. So this is just looks like a compression bandage, some type of compression bandage. And then to go along with the compression bandage, it appears that there is some electrical tape here. So that's really nice. And so as far as electrical tape goes, that's a lot like cargo tape. And then in here, these are probably well past, yeah, they look like it, but there are four capsules of Advil right there. So once again, no seas of survivability. And then lastly in here is some iodine tablets. So once again, not many seas of survivability, but a lot of very handy things. And like I said, I'm genuinely quite impressed. Uh, I can honestly tell you, aside from most of this stuff being expired, which kind of makes it fun, but aside from most of this stuff being expired, uh, you know, if all this stuff was not expired, I would not be that bad off or that disappointed personally if someone just chucked this at me and was like, okay, go out there and survive with this stuff. Because honestly, like I said, that stuff really is not that bad. Uh, so the next thing that's free floating in here, and uh, I'm not sure if this was this is going to work, and I'm not opening it up because glow sticks are known to kind of leak their contents after years and years and years and years and years of just sitting there so this one's expiracy was in 2006 so maybe i don't know maybe i'm reading that wrong i don't know okay I, i'll probably just reading that wrong because that would mean that this was already expired before we put it in here but it's it's definitely expired i'm definitely not going to open it up 
uh, but this is just obviously a cam light and cam lights are great really awesome options for lighting i think they're one of the most undervalued survival lighting implements because one they're completely waterproof you can do whatever you want so long as you don't like cut them in half or something like that but the actual thing itself is completely or i won't say completely but mostly drop proof um, and they last for quite some time. They emit a bit of light. They're not an obnoxious amount of light, but certainly if you were in pitch black and you had to navigate, it would be better than nothing. I'll say that. It, it's not gonna be great, but it's better than nothing. So once again, I'm not disappointed in a chem light and I like the resistance of chem lights. So I'm not sure what the general theme of this pouch is, but I'm guessing cordage overall because I'm seeing many different types of cord. I thought it might be also something to do with repair, such as canvas needle. Uh, and that is a sea of survivability. But if nothing else, there's multiple cordages in here. Uh, first off, there's a uh, some kind of twine rope here and uh, it's some kind of it looks like a synthetic and that would be good for using once again with a needle I'm not sure if there's a needle in here it looks like there is then there's a good this side probably stays around at least 50 feet right here wrapped up there paracord obviously very quintessential and then here this is a whistle or yeah just one whistle so one whistle and this is a very old school style i would honestly probably replace this with a howler a fox 40 howler because the howlers are really loud what i don't like about this one too if you hear that this is a ball compass and these balls uh ball compasses are knowing that if that little ball piece ever freezes or breaks or if anything happens to that then the uh essentially it's effectively ruined so that is something that i would replace and once again nowadays i mean once again when i made this kit the fox 40 was not very popular if at all even made so uh, i would definitely replace it with a fox 40 though nowadays so then this is a nail really clever uh, this is a nail wrapped around jute twine jute twine of course for those who are unfamiliar is great not only as a cordage but also as a fire starter and then okay we now have some needles here so here are some needles of multiple different sizes it looks like there is some canvas needles in here uh, it doesn't look like there are any sail needles but canvas needles are still pretty good so this i would say does add to the extra two extra seas of survivability and that is of course cordage here and then canvas needle uh, which is a sea of survivability getting further in there is some actual even more fine this is very very fine uh, cordage for doing clothes repairs i probably would not use something like this if i was in the middle of the woods just for the fact that this is pretty thin and i'm not sure the tensile strength would be up to par however i know i can thread this onto at least four to five of these different uh needles here so in here in case anyone's wondering is some safety pins and some pins that you just use normally to pin stuff and then in here i didn't even know they made ziplocs it's been this long but i didn't even know they made ziplocs this small but it looks like there are some baby ziplocs and then there are some normal size ziplocs kind of bent around so once again adding to cordage there are it looks like there's some more larger safety pins here and then a set of baby scissors. I don't know if I would personally go with baby scissors nowadays because in fairness, my knife, or I would probably just replace these scissors with like a multi-tool because that has scissors on it and it has a lot more. So in addition, there's also a straight razor a blade here or like a little uh, razor blade from a box cutter. And that's certainly useful. Uh, I would prefer personally i have to say the one thing i'm not seeing in this kit that i would really like to have is some sort of larger knife and i can't remember because i was making this uh, survival kit for a project and i honestly cannot remember in that project if uh, the knife was carried on your body and this survival kit was just to go with what you had on your body uh, but for whatever reason i would probably even if that was the case i would certainly with this amount of space try and carry at least a folder something like the adamas some heavy duty you know multi-purpose folder would be what i would try and carry but once again uh pretty impressive with the amount of cordages in here and except for the exclusion of the knife i would still be quite happy with this kit 
So now going into food. Now food's probably one of the things that most people would probably be like, eh, you know, and it's one of the most arguable things because, you know, you could trap for your food. You could set snares with some of these ropes that we just saw here. You could set traps with that food or to get food. But let's just say that this is your standalone unit and you have to survive off of what this bag provides you alone. Uh, and that's kind of when food becomes nice. So here we have a very old and it looks still pretty good. Uh, trail mix and this looks like a trail mix with a variety of nuts and uh, some M&Ms in it and some raisins I think. So pretty awesome there. These of course are just free floating in here. And then the next thing is probably the most arguable thing is Campbell's chicken noodle soup. Now what I do like about it is the fact that this is an entire meal and not only is it a meal but the whole fact is you have water in here you have your food to eat you have your water to drink and then after that you have a container that you can boil with because one of the downsides to all the other containers shown here is they're really nice but you can't boil with any of them i mean without I mean, you'd probably permanently damage them. Probably wouldn't even work. But this, for sure, I know for absolute guarantee, you can put this on a fire and you can boil water with this. So I probably would keep the Campbell's soup uh, container just for, for the fact that you have the meal, you have the water, that is the brine, and then you have the you know pot or you have this essential little pot you can boil water with after you've used it for its meal. So the next thing is, I believe, lighting. Um, yeah, so this is lighting. So once again, very quintessential, a mag light. For those who are new, very new to the survival game, before things like Through Night came along, mag light was a big deal. And a lot of people carried mag lights. And I still think they're quite durable. They, they really are not as bad as many people think. The only reason they're so terrible is the fact that they use very ancient, uh, what is it, like, the illumination in it I, I don't even know what to really call this it's bulb i guess you could say i guess this actually uses a literal bulb but the bulb in this is very very uh not good it does not emit that much light and that's probably the biggest reason why people dislike mag lights is not that they're not tough but the fact that you know they don't emit that much light especially in comparison i mean you can get a through night that's half this size that will emit at least four times as much light as this so I believe that this was the light, and then here is fishing stuff. So yeah, and here we have some floats, uh, we have some hooks of multiple different sizes, very big hooks. We have some very tiny split shot, and this is actually some pretty thick monofilament line. I'm not sure the tensile strength on this stuff, but this, this is the largest monofilament line I've seen in a while. So it definitely does not look bad. Uh, but yeah, lots of different hooks and split shot sinkers. Sorry, I'm gonna move my feet here. Uh, but lots of hooks and split shot sinkers in there. Very good for fishing. I believe there's more fishing elements in here. There is definitely some more, uh, what is this, aluminum foil. And then a six foot poly stringer. I'm not sure what that does. <laughs> I don't even know. But whatever this poly stringer does, I have no idea. I think it has to correlate with something that has to do with fishing. I apologize if I don't know what that is, and you guys do. Definitely let me know in the comment section below, because I am not a fisher at all. Up here in Fairbanks, there's not really that much fishing that goes on anyways. So I've never really been much of a fisher, but I have no idea what that thing does. So anyways, that's what's in there, and of course, one of them fell out, but there were two double A's in there. Hey, this double A's good till 2017. It's good till this month. <laughs> These things making me look like liars, but that kind of gives you guys an idea of how old this is, because alkaline batteries generally have like around a 10-year lifespan, so hopefully that's able to kind of date-proof this uh, kit. And now we're beginning to wind it down on um, this. I'm not really sure what this is. It looks like it's just a piece of paper in here. I believe this is probably, I'm not going to open it up here because it's a little chilly now, but uh, I believe this is just the pack contents, but once again, in another plastic bag. So I'm always glad to see another plastic bag in a survival kit that is a plastic bag. And then lastly, but hopefully not least, is a body warmer. These are something you don't see too much, but always very, very appreciated. And so 
for anyone that doesn't know, as the name implies, it's a body warmer. So it's like a hand warmer on ultra steroids. This is meant to be thrown like in a, uh, what are they? Thrown in some kind of bivy or whatever you're sleeping in. And this is meant to be put up against your body. Uh, not uh, directly against the skin, obviously, but, you know, put up against your clothes like you'd be putting it in between your thermal layer and your coat, and this would be keeping you warm. Like I said, this is for the body, not for the toes, not for the hands. Uh, so very neat to see. You really don't see that many body warmers anymore these days, and I think that's really because technology has become so much better nowadays for what we wear that we really don't need body warmers. But hey, in a survival situation, I mean, I'm not going to, especially when it's winter and it's cold, I'm not going to discredit a body warmer at all. And I'll probably be the first one to take it just because, I mean, like I said, you, I don't think it'd necessarily be a bad thing. It's certainly not going to hurt you to say the least. But anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed taking a quick look uh, at that kit. Overall, my thoughts were on it. Uh, it covered all the five C's except cutlery, in my opinion. I mean, it had, you know, like a razor blade, but I think for a kit this large, uh, I would have really preferred it to have something better, something bigger, you know, at least a folding knife. I mean, at least like a folder, but uh, it did not have any real knife in my opinion. I mean, it had some blades for sure. Like I had a pair of scissors and it had, you know, a, a one razor blade, but, you know, that in my opinion kind of sucks, especially like I said, uh, really thinking about just how large this kit is, I would have really preferred it to have something a little bit more meaningful in the blade department. But other than that, it definitely covered uh, all the other C's of survivability. Uh, it covered the only other one it didn't cover. I think it covered eight. Uh, I mean, technically nine, if you do consider that there are some blades in here. But it covered, I think, around eight, because the other thing that was missing, in at least in the ten C's of survivability, was the um, cotton. And, I mean, technically you might argue that the cotton could have been one of these. So in that case, you know, aside from, like I said, a lackluster blade, it would have covered all 10 C's of survivability and then actually had some room to spare with the whole fact of everything else. Aside from that, uh, like I said, it really did cover a lot of the C's of survivability. Not to say that the C's are very hard to, you know, cover, but very impressive because, like I said, keeping in mind the fact that I knew very, very little about what I was doing uh, with this kit, I think it's a very comprehensive kit for all things being considered. And uh, like I was continually saying that if I did have to take this kit into a survival situation, honestly, I mean, while some of the gear, like the mag light uh, and this ferro rod here would be like, wow, you know, that's old school, but uh, really not bad, you know, still definitely usable. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this nice little look at a very old school kit uh, and don't once again don't forget to comment like share subscribe and that's it for now i'm out